Hello and welcome to this TouchJFX how-to video. Today we'll show you how to set the data in a text area. So let's get started. The text area is an essential widget that allows you to display text in your application. It can handle different types of data and languages. The text area value in your project can be changed in real time. This can be done in the UI, but for more complex operation, it has to be done in the code. So this how-to video will be focused on how to change text area data in the code. So first, we'll see how to handle text present in the text database and numbers. Then I will show you how it goes with dynamic strings in different languages. At the time of this video, the version I use of TouchFX is the 4.24.1. Before starting, you need a project with at least one text area that contains a wildcard. Don't forget to enable the buffer and set the buffer size to 10 in the wildcard. Here, we set it to 10, but in a real project, that has to be the maximum size of the data contained in the text area. All the text in the TouchFX project are Unicode sharp pointers. That's also the case for the text areas widget text. If you want to assign an entry from the text database to your text area, then you will need to call the function snprintf. For this example, I will create a text in a text database. Then I will add a button and add an interaction to it. So when I will click the button, then the text will change. In our project, I have a button that will change the text when I click on it. To do so, I need to add an interaction. So go to the interaction panel on the right and click on the plus to add one. You have multiple fields to fill to define your interaction. First, the trigger, that is the thing that will trigger your interaction. For us, that's when the button is clicked. Then choose which button will be clicked. Below, you have the action, that what will happen when the trigger is called. For us, that's a virtual function call. I will just leave the default name to keep it simple. Don't forget to regenerate your project after the modifications. So now to do the code modifications, I need to modify some files. These files are located at GUI include GUI. First, I go to the screen view one.hpp. Inside this file, I will have to add the function one to the declaration. And then I will implement the function in the CPP file. In the CPP file, all the values that I will use for the Unicode SNPrintf were generated by TouchFX. So there will be name after the name uh, I gave them in the screen. First, the destination buffer. Here it's text room buffer. The destination buffer size. So here that's text room underscore size. Then you have the format. Since we want to show a text, uh, it will be percentage %s between two semicolon because it's a Unicode char. And the last parameter is the source data. So here's a stgfx type text t underscore bathroom that get text. That's the text that comes from the text database. The text I added before was called bathroom. So now it's t underscore bathroom. When you have wrote everything, don't forget to invalidate your text area. I can go back to the simulator. And now when I click on the button, the text changes. You can also use SNPrintf for integer numbers and single shards. Here I will show you how it goes for a number. So I need to add a new interaction. It will be the same process as when I added interaction one. The only difference is the button and the name of the function. So here it's function two. In the code, we also have to, instead of using semicolon, percentage S, semicolon, we use percentage D. This is the format needed to show numbers. Here with numbers, I can directly put the value. Let's see how it looks now. I run, and you can see when I click, the temperature change. 
For float numbers, we use a function called snprintf float. It takes the same parameter as the regular snprintf, except that it only accepts float. Now we are able to show text from text database and numbers, but how can we display text that is not in the database? Let's see how we do it in the next section. In that case, we have to use another function called string copy. This will copy your data to the text area buffer. Ensure that you include your wildcard range and your wildcard characters. Otherwise, your project will not be compiled with the needed characters. Although this is handy for strings, you can only use it for Unicode uncoded strings. Here I want the text kitchen when I press the button. But instead of using a text from the database, I will use a string that I will declare in the code. To do so, I do the same as before. I create a new interaction with a different trigger, so that will be another button, and a different function name. For the function name, I will keep the default one, we see function 3. When the generation is done, I can add the declaration in the HPP file, so that the same as before, except that you will have to add in the screen one view, void function 3. Now I go to the CPP file. To make it simple, I will just copy what I did for the previous interaction, but instead of using snprintf, I would use strcopy. copy. I create a string with the text kitchen. So in the call of strnr copy, first I put the destination buffer. Here that will be my text room buffer. The source buffer, which is my string. And at the end, I have the destination buffer size. So that's still text room underscore size. Now I can go back to the designer. I run the simulator. And when I click, you can see that the text change. Although this is handy for string, you can only use it for Unicode encoded strings. Contrary to the defined text in the database, some languages that are in UTF-8 will not be rendered properly with STNR copy. To overcome this limitation, we can use a function called from UTF-8. It will convert and set your UTF-8 string to a Unicode char buffer. For this example, I will use a string with Korean characters. First, you need to add the wildcards for your text. So in my case, I will directly add the whole Korean word in the wildcard. In the code, I create a string with the Korean characters. After that, I remove the strn copy in the function tree, and instead I use from UTF-8. In that function, I first pass my value, which is the Korean string, then the destination buffer, so that will be the text room like before, and finally, the destination buffer size, which is text room underscore size. So now I can go back to the designer, can run it, and you can see that the text is set correctly. So now you are able to show text that comes from the text database or numbers with snprintf function and float numbers with snprint float function dynamic text from strings with the strn copy function, and you are also able to deal with UTF-8 characters with the from UTF-8 function. Note that you can learn more by checking our documentation at the TouchFX website. We also have the ST forum where you can ask or answer questions and also find answers. Don't forget that we have other tutorial videos you can watch at our YouTube channel. So thank you for your attention and see you next time.